You know, it's incredible that, to understand exactly, you know, what God has done for each and every one of us, what he gave up for each and every one of us. It's incredible to understand that, to realize that. And that can be incredibly empowering. But let's, if we're really honest, we can look out and we can have incredible opportunities to experience God's goodness. And then the reality is we walk out into the world and we can understand this, this statement that the struggle is real. That it's real. That there's a very real struggle that, that we all experience. We have experienced, we're experiencing now, or we will experience and really what, it, what that comes down to is it really surrounds the idea that it really comes down to our identity and how we see, how we see ourselves. See, identity by definition means the fact of being, or who, being who or what a person or thing was designed or created to be. If we're honest, if we really dig deep within ourselves, we, we all have deeply rooted a deeply rooted desire to know who we are. To know who we are and why our life matters. But if we're honest, we often struggle to fully answer those questions. In this series, we're going to take a deeper look into, into who we are and who we were created to be. Now, whether it's a label that we, we have believed about ourselves or one that others have assigned to us, the reality that we need to grab onto is that God has a better one for you, regardless of what you think or what somebody else thinks. And we have a deep desire to understand that. We have a deep desire to understand who we are and why our life matters. We do. The issue is that in this culture, especially the selfie-driven culture that we, we have and in pursuit of answering those two questions, the struggle is the fact that it's to identify that, to understand that, falls on me. Falls on you to understand who we are and who, who we, why we matter. What's interesting about that, I mean, especially when, when we, you get to decide who you are. You decide what the difference, what difference your life will make. I mean, think about it. We put our own filters on our pictures, right? To make sure that we look how we should, we want to look, right? Or we, we, control, we try to control our narrative as much as we possibly can. We control our social media persona. We control many things in our lives so that we, so we can control how we are perceived, how we are seen, how we feel about ourselves. But what's interesting about that is that although we are all very, all very different, and may even have very different ways of, of defining ourselves or defining others, at the core of who we are, we all have very, very similar needs. We have very similar needs. In fact, God himself created us to have very basic needs. He made us this way for a reason, that we would have similarities when it comes to this. We are, pre we are pre-wired in our human design to have needs, and it speaks, and it speaks of God's design. And in the early or in the in the twentieth century, there was a American psychologist by the name of Abraham Maslow who who really discovered what God created and instituted way before and designed before our needs. He came up with the Maslow's hierarchy of needs that in our in our very basic nature, human beings, we all have needs in our lives. We all do. We need water, or air, food. We need shelter, safety. We need friendship, love, intimacy. We need self-esteem. We need respect. We need value. We need worth. And we need purpose. But these are things that we all need. And Maslow's idea was is that at the very basic level, it has to start there. That when we understand those needs and when we receive those needs, we can then move on to the next hierarchy, which is safety. And then we can move on to love and belonging and esteem and to the self-actualization where we actually begin to understand why we're here. See, Maslow had seen it in this 
process that would take place, God designed it so that we may understand that what we need to know is who we are and why our life matters. That we would be, when we begin to understand this, this, we begin to experience a full life in, our, in ourselves. And this can be incredibly difficult to understand who we are. I don't know about anybody else, but I've had my struggles with understanding who I am. You know, as in, in high school, I was, I was an athlete, and I went to college to, to play sports. And, and uh, after a couple injuries and, well, just let's be real honest, a, a lack of drive, um, I was no longer an athlete. And then I was just lost. Because that's how I identified myself. That's how I lived. And, and, and my experience may not be your experience, but I guarantee you've probably had your own experiences to where something of what you thought was really who you are was taken away or is no longer there, and then you really struggled to figure out who you were. But according to Paul and according to Scripture, to understand who we are and to understand why our life matters is incredibly important for those who are in Christ. In a letter that he wrote to the Corinthians, we can pick it up in, in the fifth chapter, starting at verse 16, it says this, so from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. So in this prior, what Paul is writing to the Corinthians and what he was expressing is that in, in our everyday life, we looked at one another, we looked at ourselves, we looked at others, we looked at, they looked at Jesus in a very worldly manner. That what, what they had to offer, whether it be career or there's some form of success, wealth, whatever it may be, that this identity that they had was seen from a worldly matter. And he goes, but now that we know the truth, we no longer regard the world in this way. We no, we're, no longer regard others in this way. We look at each other differently. And he goes on and says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, can I just stop for just a moment because that, that's incredibly important to understand right now. If anyone is in Christ, what's important about that is that word anyone. Anyone. Because listen, many times we choose to stay away from the idea of Jesus or church, or God, religion, faith, spirituality, whatever it may be, because we don't feel like we, we stack up to it. We don't belong there. That we, this is not for me. I've done too much. I've done too bad. I cannot do this. But the reality of it is, is that if anyone, if anyone is in Christ, and he continues on and goes, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. But there's, there, there is, there's a change that takes place. When we are in Christ, there's a change that takes place. Being a new creation means that my old life is gone. How maybe I identified myself, how others may have, I have identified me, what my name may have meant then, that's old. There's a new creation, and the new creation is here, in Christ. And what really what we're, what we're driving to is this simple, this simple statement. In Christ, I am not who I used to be. I'm who God says I am. I'm who God says I am. And he continues on, and Paul continues on in this, in, in this letter, confirming this statement. He says, all this is from God. Paul makes a very simple statement that all of this that has taken place, all that we have shared, it is not me, it is not man-driven, it's not, it's not something that's a, a narrative that has been made up. This all comes from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. That he saw us in our broken nature. He saw us identifying ourselves in a certain way that this is who I am. This is, he saw this in, in, in knowing that this isn't the reality. 
He did something about it. He did something about it. And he continues on, he says, and he has committed us to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What we see in these, these what, eight verses, six verses, whatever, however many verses it is, from 16 to 21, I'm making a, I, my addition's terrible, apologize. But in those, in those verses right there, this statement of who we are and why our life matters is, is, is right there. That we, we, are, we are a new creation. Why? So that we may be ministers of reconciliation. That, that Christ went to the cross so that we would be reconciled to God our relationship, we could have a relationship with him. That took place so that we could be a new creation. So there and for we could help others to realize that same truth for them as well. In Christ, I am not who I used to be. I'm who God says I am. What Paul, what Paul means when he says in Christ in Christ, I'm a new creation. What does he mean by that? I think that he means that it means God gives you a new name. He gives you a new name. Names are important. Names, ma- names mean a lot, right? Like because what, because a name that we associate with ourselves, or a name that maybe we, a, 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 a title maybe that we have given ourselves, or somebody has given us, we I, will identify by that. That will direct our lives in many ways. It'll show us what to do. And this is, God created it in this manner. God, who has several names, several names. God's his title, but God has several names. Just a few of them would be provider and healer and protector. See, his names, what they did is they, re- they reveal his character. They reveal his character and his purpose in this world, for this world. To, to his chosen people and to the world as a whole through his chosen people. Names are important because when you know who you are, you'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. And we see this. Not only was it meant for God, but it was meant for all of his people. We receive a, a natural name, a, 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 a birth name, but God would, he would see these natural names. We see it in scripture where he took people's names and he changed them so that they would mean what they are meant for in this world. We see this with Abram. God changed his name to Abraham, that he would be a father of multitude. But the promise that God gave him, he identified it in his name. That he would be a father of of many nations, of all nations. That it would start there with Abraham. The same with his wife. From Sarai to Sarah, woman of strength. We see this with Jacob. Jacob, who wrestled with God, searching for blessings, searching for more in his life. God changed his name to Israel. One who fights and overcomes with the power of God is what Israel means. We see this with Simon. God changed his name to Peter that he would be the rock. That he would be the rock. And they were named not for who, named not for who they have been or what they've done, but who they were becoming. See, that's how God sees us. He sees us not who we are or where we've been or what we've done, but who we are becoming. So if we rewind back to 2 Corinthians 5, 16, it says this, so from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. That we would see things differently. When we are in Christ, we will see things differently. We'll see ourselves differently. See, knowing the name that God calls you, because you have your given name, your birth name. My name's Nate, right? Your name is whatever it may be. <laughs> it's a lot of names. I, don't, I'm just, I can't go through them all. I don't want anybody to feel left out. But, but your, 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 name, your name means something, meant something to your parents when they gave, gave it to you. But the name that God has for you is far greater. It has far greater purpose when once we begin to know the names that God is, is referring to us, and when we, help, when we embrace that reality, 
We can embrace the reality that I'm not who I used to be, but I am who God says I am. When, what that does is when we begin to understand that it helps us to reject all the other identifiers that we may experience in our life, all the other names and monikers and titles that we may receive from the world or from ourselves, we can reject those because of who he is and what he says about us, regardless of the circumstances. That we no longer have the limitations that have been placed upon us because of those, those names and monikers. You want to know the names that God has for you today? Here's the names that God has for you today. You're loved. You're loved you're forgiven, you're the light of the world, you're the salt of the earth, you're a city on a hill, you are redeemed, you are chosen, you are God's very own, you are an overcomer, you are a conqueror, you're more than a conqueror, you're a child of God, you're a priest, you're an heir, you're saved, and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. When you are in Christ, that is how God sees you, that is what God has named you. That's who you are. And do you see all the other names and titles and monikers that we receive in this world come with limitations and restrictions. But those names have no limitations. Those names have no restrictions. That's how God sees you. And what's beautiful about this is that when we receive a new name, when we receive that new name, it comes with a new identity. It comes with a new identity. Can I, I'm going to be real open with you. I haven't always liked my name. In fact, I, I, I hated it at one point. As a young kid, I wanted a different name. In fact, I asked my parents to name me something different. I did. You want to know what that name was? Doug. <laughs> and that's no shade at Doug's, all right? Very nice name. But I wanted to change my name to Doug. <laughs> Doug. You know what's interesting about that? It really wasn't about the name. It wasn't about the name. There was a kid in my school, his name was Doug. Doug was cool. Doug had spiky hair. I heard a snore at somebody's spiky hair. It was cool then. Doug had an earring. Doug was tough. It wasn't the name that I wanted. I wanted a new identity. I wanted, I wanted to be someone different. I didn't want to be who I thought I was. I wanted something more for my life. And, that, and that's the reality that, that we live in, although that seems funny. <laughs> but that's the reality that, we're, that we, if we're really honest with ourselves, we all feel secure. We often feel insecure about who we are. Whether it's wrapped up in our name or whatever it may be, it's the identity that we have that we feel insecure about. All of us. And those, be honest, if those who hide it best are the ones that probably suffer the most and feel it the most, that the internal struggle that they experience of not really being secure in who they are. But the beautiful thing about it is that our insecurity is an opportunity for God. Our insecurity is an opportunity and it's an invitation from God to escape the danger of false beliefs about who we are and find true peace in who he created us to be. That with a new name, a new understanding comes a new identity. It comes a new belief in who we really are. See, Christ wants to move us from insecurity in who we are to security in who we are in Christ. That's what he wants to move us from because, because re, here's where it comes down, what it comes down to. In Jesus, we do not lose our true selves. Many times we, we are apprehensive about stepping into this idea of faith because well, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to lose who I really am. I don't want to be what it's, what it looks like it's supposed to be. But the reality is we do not lose our true self, but we become our true selves when we are in Christ when we are following after Jesus, when we're pursuing after him, we become, we begin to become our best version of ourselves, who God has created us to be. <clears throat> but it takes some giving up of who we think we are, who the world thinks we are. Jesus says these words, and it's recorded in Matthew chapter 16, says, if anyone desires to come after me. You see that? There's a familiar word there, right? If anyone, if anyone 
desires to come and after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. See, when we're lost in who we are, we don't know who we are. The best, that's the, the best place to be is in that place because then we can search after where that may be, where that is. And when we search after in Christ, we find who we are and what we have been made to be. Identity is not defined in terms of who we are in and of ourselves. It's defined in terms of what God does inside us and the relationship he creates with us and the destiny he appoints for us. This is where we begin to find it, friends. So in Christ, we, are no longer, we no longer look at our identity and the labels that people may have placed upon us, but we begin to, we begin to and we, we lose our old selves and we, completely, and we do that completely and intentionally for the purpose of finding our true selves in Christ. We will find that we belong in Christ. We see this in John chapter 1. It says, yet to all who did receive him, an experience that takes place, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. See, the beauty of it is, is that it's there. The opportunity is already there. It's up to us to choose, to choose this, to choose this for our life. See, receiving Jesus, believing Jesus is who he says he is, does something wonderful for us. It makes us a part of a family. It makes us a part, it brings this new identity in who we are because we, we belong to something different. We, we get to step into a whole nother level. We go from acquaintances or just people who kind of show up to we become part of the family. We get to receive what many of you may have or have experienced or experienced in someone else's home or maybe there's people in your life that experience in this home where they receive refrigerator rights right like the door just go ahead get whatever you want out of there right there's something special about that you know you're on a whole nother level with somebody when they're like yeah it's all your whatever you want there's something to that there's no restrictions or limitations when it comes to that and that's the beauty of what he's setting up for each and every one of us that what he has is for, it can be ours as well. His joy becomes our joy. His joy becomes our joy. His love becomes our love. His peace becomes our peace. His strength becomes our strength. That we begin to, we, we take on a whole nother identity, a new identity when we are in him, when we choose to pursue after him. He gives us a new name and he gives us a new identity. And we're no longer just citizens of this earth but we're citizens of heaven. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. And he tells us this, Paul writes to the Philippians to remind them of this, who who they are. And he says this, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when we receive that new name, when we take on that new identity, we eagerly await Jesus. We eagerly await to serve him, to pursue after him, to follow after him, to to encounter him. We eagerly await for this. See, what happens is is when when we get a new name, when we get a new identity, it does something internally with us. A new identity creates a new way of thinking. Our identity affects our thinking, how we see things. And when we, when, we, when we take on this new identity, when we accept the name that, that God offers for, through, to us through Jesus, when we receive that, we receive our new identity, our way of thinking is going to change. It's going to change. Watch this in Colossians 3, 1 through 3. It says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden in, with, in, with Christ in God. See, what, what we're seeing here is there's a transformation that begins to take place. There's a transformation that begins to take place because here's, here's the reality. 
We can't take on a whole new way of life if our, our, we still have an old way of thinking. That all has to change. That needs to take place. And when we have our hearts and our eyes and our minds focused on where it needs to be focused, when we have a new aiming point, we begin to change the way we think. It upgrades our thinking. Something happens. We see things differently. We see people differently. We see ourselves differently. We see, we see struggles as opportunity. We see disaster as a chance for God to be seen. We see these things differently. See, the mind is the most fierce battlefield, especially with your new life in Christ. We need to take our mind off our, off the, when we take our mind off the, the target, we slip off the path that, that has been laid out before us. And you know, you probably experienced this, right? There's a lot of things that we can do in our lives. When we have our eyes focused on something, we can pursue after it. But as soon as we start to move it a little bit, we start to slide off the path. We start to move away from what, what has been set out for us. It, happens, it can happen really easily. It can happen without even really knowing it. But it's important that we set our minds on new, on new things because here's the deal. As, as Paul, was, he was writing these letters to the churches, he was writing one to the Romans. Who, the Romans, there was all kinds of different ways of thinking in the Roman culture, all kinds of it. And it was pretty easy to fall back into those old ways of thinking and Paul is really pretty straightforward. He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your focus will renew your mind. It'll get your mind in the place that it needs to be. And to be completely honest, the enemy, Satan, the devil, he can't take your life. He can't take your soul. He can't take, he can't take that. When you, have, when you are in Christ, he can't take that. But his game that he loves to play is right here with our thinking. Mess with our, to mess with our thinking. It's a game of deceit. But really, it's the same game over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. You don't believe me? Have conversations with other people. And when you're really honest with one another, you're all, all experiencing the same deceit. Experience the same thoughts. Same, same doubts. It's the same thing over and over and over and over again. But God is good. Jesus died for our minds to be renewed and to, be, to, be, to see what really is laid out before us. And the truth is, is our thought life is, is what moves us towards our new self when we have our eyes focused on it. And listen, the greatest question that we can begin to answer, if we want to experience new life, we want to experience a life that is filled with fullness and abundance, life that is, that is not lost in, in the bland, ordinary things of this world, is being able to answer this question. Who am I? Who am I? And I, I, the answer is in here. It's, been, it's laid out for us. It's, it's, it's in here. We, if we want to understand who we are, who you've been created to be, it's within these pages. It's been recorded. It's been, it's been saved, preserved, so that we may understand who we really are. And then when we really begin to experience it and know it is when we actually begin to live it out. When we begin to trust what this says and live this out, we begin to experience who we really are because in Christ, I'm not who I used to be. I'm who God says that I am. I'm who I, God says I am. It doesn't matter. And friends, it's for anyone. It doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't matter how you've been labeled. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what your experiences have been. It's for anyone. That includes you. It's for anyone. A new name, a new identity, and a new way of thinking. This is just the beginning. As we go on this journey of understanding who we are and why our life matters. The struggle is real. But we're all in this together.
Let me pray for you.